Hi, my name is Kate James. I'm a cataloger and a former member of the RDA Steering Committee. This video in the RDA Concept Series is about vocabulary and coding schemes. A lot of people think that this is a new concept with new RDA. However, a vocabulary and coding scheme was defined in the original RDA Toolkit Glossary, although I don't think it was added until um, several years after the original toolkit release in 2010. Regardless of when the term came about, this is not a new concept to catalogers. In fact, if you're a cataloger now, I guarantee you that you are using vocabulary and coding schemes in your work. You just might not have realized that that's what it's called. I'll show you the definition, which I've bookmarked to get to a little bit easier. Okay, so a vocabulary and coding scheme is a named structured list of representations of controlled values for elements. So this scope note gives some types of vocabulary and coding schemes and says that simple keyword indexes are excluded. So some specific examples of vocabulary and coding schemes or VESs as they're also known would be the RDA VES for content type, uh, an ISO code list like ISO 639 code list for languages. So controlled vocabulary lists like Library of Congress subject headings, authority control systems like LC NACO authority file. All of these are examples of vocabulary encoding schemes. The reason that we use vocabulary encoding schemes is as a source to record values for RDA elements. So not every RDA element will have a vocabulary encoding scheme value recorded for it. Um, and you can also decide to record an unstructured description, which would just be an uncontrolled term. But many elements do have the option to record uh, a term or an identifier or an IRI from a vocabulary encoding scheme. So we'll take a look at one of those now. Script is one. So the element script identifies an expression. And as you can see here, you can record unstructured description, structured description. Now, there is no RDA VES for script, so it just tells you to record one from a suitable VES. Notice also that you're supposed to record the source of the term, so you need to also say what the VES is. This is so that people can go to the VES and find out exactly what the term meaning is, and they know that this is a, uh, a controlled value. You can record an identifier for that term. So an identifier would be some kind of a machine readable string, usually alphanumeric notation. And again, with an identifier, you need to record the VES source so that somebody can go to that VES and look up the identifier and understand exactly what is meant. Finally, you can record an IRI. Now with an IRI, you don't need to specify the VES separately because the VES is part of the IRI itself. You'll see what I mean with an example up here. Okay, this first example is unstructured description. So vocabulary encoding scheme doesn't apply. But then these next three examples come from vocabulary encoding schemes. So these are identifiers for scripts from this ISO code list, then this is an IRI from the Getty Art and Architecture Thesaurus. The VES isn't specified here, but if you were to copy and paste this IRI into your browser, you would go to the page and see it comes from the Getty Art and Architecture Thesaurus. Then finally, here's a controlled term, should be very familiar to you. Maybe not the specific term, but the idea. Um, so this also comes from the ISO code list. And then this is a structured description. So again, script is not an element that has a RDA VES available, but I'll show you one that does now, aspect ratio designation. I like this one because there's only three terms in the RDA VES. So you could decide not to record um, anything from a VES, just uh, unstructured. You could record a structured description from the RDA VES, which is one of these three terms. 
And I apologize, this link doesn't work. I'm sure uh, ALA Publishing will have this fixed for the next toolkit release, but I'll show you what it would go to in a minute. So again, note that you wanna record the source. And if you don't like um, the RDA VES terms for aspect ratio designation, you can use another suitable VES and record that source. Again, identifier and IRI. Now we'll go back to the top and I'll show you where that link would have gone to. So this is the VES list for all the RDA vocabulary encoding schemes. So aspect ratio, aspect ratio designation, excuse me. In this view, you can see the term, the IRI and the identifier. So it's nice you have all of that uh, information here. And this is a feature that is important with the RDA VES terms because you can use all three of those recording methods. Not every VES has all three um, of these available to it. For example, the ISO code lists don't have IRIs unless something changed recently that I don't know of. It's something to keep in mind when you're choosing a vocabulary encoding scheme uh, for your data because as you moved into the linked data environment, if IRIs are not available, the VES might become inappropriate as your data gets more sophisticated. So that's really all I have to say about VESs on the toolkit page, but I do want to show you two other pages. So this is the RDA registry, which is the source for the VES terms. This is the aspect ratio designation page. And you can see it's the same information, just slightly different presentation. And on the homepage for the registry, there's information about the GitHub project and you can download all of the uh, value vocabulary files from the GitHub project page. And then finally, I wanted to show you this presentation that is available from the RDA steering committee website. This is a presentation I did at ALA Midwinter this year on RDA vocabulary encoding schemes. It wasn't recorded, so we don't have an audio, but if you click here, you can download a PDF of the slides. So thank you very much for watching. Bye.